Hey guys, I'm Abhishek from Plugin India. All of us at Plugin India own only electric vehicles and create content for the EV community. In this episode of Electric Car Watch, we will talk about the Indian electric car startup Strom Motors. In 2018, we were delighted to see a startup based in Mumbai showcasing a unique concept, a three-wheeled reverse strike electric car to be made in India. As many of you know, I'm a small car enthusiast as are many members of our team and I instantly fell in love with this car and booked it. The car cost rupees 4.5 lakhs for the 200 km variant. Strom also offers a 120 and 160 km variant. I booked the 200 km variant as I travel a lot both within and without city limits. Of course, the lack of DC fast charging, at least at the time of reporting, will make longer journeys more or less impractical. Nevertheless, I do plan to take the car to Pune and back, if for nothing else than to see the stairs it will attract on the highway. The year 2022 is almost here and we still have no news on what, when deliveries will happen. The latest information I've received is that test drives for customers will start in early 2022. I booked my car in Feb 2021 and delivery was promised within 12 months. To be perfectly honest, I thought I'd receive the car by Diwali, but that didn't happen and now I'm running out of patience. As a customer, I would not be annoyed if Strom sent me frequent communication on the company's delivery timeline or gave me updates on any progress that is being made. I pay rupees 10,000 and I expect monthly updates, not one email every six months. Investing in car startups is risky business. I get it. But what I expect is frequent communication. That is basic startup etiquette 101. Every startup that takes money from its customers must communicate every month on every small milestone that is being reached. That is the only way to prevent customers from becoming paranoid and worrying if their money is gone. Remember when the original Tesla Roadster kept getting delayed back in the late 2000s? Elon Musk personally met scores of customers at the time and assured them that their concerns were being heard. That kind of transparency and candid behavior simply isn't found in India. In March 2021, Strom said they made sales of worth rupees 7.5 crores or around 170 units in Delhi, NCR and Greater Mumbai. Apparently, they have a plant in Kashipur in Uttarakhand with a monthly capacity of 500 units. And they have leads of more than 500 in Delhi and Bombay and once they make deliveries there, they will focus on Bangalore and Pune. Now, can Strom Motors sustain themselves for the next 4-5 to five years? That is the most important question as potential customers will need to have some assurance. As there are no dealers and as sales will happen directly with customers, assuming a margin of a lakh rupees per car, that will be 20 crore rupees profit per annum if Strom manages to sell 200 cars each year. We feel that a car company selling 200 units per year is just not enough. That's less than 20 a month and when you include overhead expenses like R&D staff, service staff, it's hard to achieve economies of scale. It's also important to keep component vendors happy. Apart from angel funding, Strom is yet to raise serious capital from investors and they will need it if they want to fund R&D and future product development. We still don't have any news on this. That is definitely concerning. Here are some suggestions on how Strom can remain a relevant player this decade. Number 1. Increase production numbers. The Strom team will need to up their sales numbers to more than 1000 units per annum. 200 units just won't cut it. They will need regular cash flows that can be ploughed into R&D, new vehicle designs, vertical integration efforts and so on. Also, investors will be more keen to invest their money if their numbers are better. Even 1000 per annum is too low according to experienced people in the automotive space. We spoke to EV community member and friend of the channel Mr. Zared Lobo who has 30 plus years of experience building custom electric cars and refurbishing old EVs. He said if Strom maintains low numbers and ends up custom building cars for their customers, they will never get into real production and will find their business becoming unsustainable in the long run. He cited the example of an Indian car company called Sam Motors India, a limited edition sports car company operating from 1998 to 2011. They never made it to production and stuck to custom building cars for many years because of low numbers. Ultimately, they had to shut shop. Mr. Zarel feels that if Strom does not plan for production and remains happy with custom builds, they will meet the same fate. Yet another 
what could have been footnote in Indian automotive history. We thank Zarel for this perspective and if anyone from Strom is watching, you should really speak to him if you haven't already. Like the Plug-in India team, he wants Strom to succeed. So, what can Strom do to increase their production numbers? I don't see the R3 selling in very large numbers. Let's face it, the R3 will be lapped up by hardcore enthusiasts but the majority of Indian, particularly those with large families, are practical people and won't even consider the car except as a toy to play around with. If they want to dramatically increase the numbers, they will have to pivot. One idea is to retain the same platform and create a variant that can be used by delivery companies. The R3 already has a 300 liter boot. Maybe they can remove the front seat for extra storage space. Some of the technological features can be eliminated in this variant for additional cost savings. A 200 km delivery vehicle costing 3.5 lakhs after FAME 2 subsidies ought to do nicely. EV delivery will be a huge business this decade and this variant can help Strom with numbers. Number 2. Don't ever take investment help from big ice legacy car makers. They will kill you. We've seen this happening with the Reva electric car company when Mahindra acquired it and systematically destroyed its products and processes and booted out its people. Even the great Mr. Chetan Mani couldn't save his baby. Strom should take money from investors who are not in from the auto industry. Number three. Open Strom rental experience centers in four to five major cities. People can then experience what a three-wheeled car is like to drive. This will lead to more conversion. Number four, speak to other EV startups like eBike Go, Mobisi and Yulu who can offer Strom R3 as part of their last mile transportation service. This will lead to more visibility and more sales for Strom. In the US, three-wheeler electric cars are beginning to take off. We have startups like Akimoto and Aptera who will soon start manufacturing and selling reverse trikes that resemble the Strom R3. Strom can take the best practices from those companies and incorporate them into their processes. I really want Strom to succeed and remain a relevant player this decade. Strom's success is very important as they are an EV-focused startup and have no ICE baggage. Once they start offering affordable electric cars in India, the big ICE mafia can't offer any more excuses and will have to think of launching small electric cars. Also, you can expect real software features and a true EV driving experience from the Strom. This isn't a retrofit like the Nexon EV or a low-powered budget car like the E2O. I hope we see de deliveries happening in 2022. Thank you for watching. Do write in the comments below on your thoughts about this about Strom Motor. Give us some ideas on what strategies the startup can adopt to be successful. And I will see you next week in another episode of Electric Car Watch. Goodbye.